Hello, welcome to another Sonic Lab. We've got something very special today, hot off the press. I've been having to bite my tongue on this because I've not been able to talk about it, but I have had it for a little while. And that is the Artoria Micro Brute. Tiny little analog synthesizer, very much in the same mold as the original uh, Mini Brute, which was, of course, one of the first of this sort of new breed of uh, nouveau analog, shall we call them, analog monos, which we seem to be having a kind of golden age of. We've got tons. I mean, only the other week I was reviewing the Base Station 2. We've got the Korg MS-20 Mini recreation. There are plenty of, and the Volkers, of course, quite a lot of these things coming out. So the Micro Brute is brand new monophonic analog subtractive synthesizer based very much on the same uh, engine as the Mini Brute, but there are some differences. But let's take a quick look at the front panel. It's got a two octave keyboard which transmits velocity over MIDI, though the synth doesn't respond to it, and no aftertouch. Uh, it's also got something very interesting here, which are these little, uh, this little patch bay, essentially, which gives you CV out from the envelope and from the LFO and allows you to patch it into these destinations. More on that later. Uh, first, start off with the oscillator. It's a multi-wave oscillator, very similar uh, to the Mini Brute, um, but we've got a sub here, which is a square wave, which you can tune from, it's one octave below, and you can blend it around from a sub to a, to a fifth, so it changes the sort of tone of it. As We've also got Sawtooth. If I give you the oscillators here, you should be able to see what's going on. Very hearty, good range to the oscillator. Uh, this is, has the same thing where you can dial in a triple saw wave. If you want to add the same detune element, you patch it via the LFO into the saw wave input on the patch bay. Good buzzy sound. Then we've got the square wave. Turn that up a bit. Our variable pulse width. This is a modulatable feature. Then we have the triangle wave with the metalizer, which allows us to sort of, I think it folds it over and turns it into this really unusual metallic waveform. You notice I only turn them up to halfway. All of the uh, knobs on the front panel here uh, for the oscillator, if you take them up to 12 o'clock, they're standard. They don't drive the filter. You take them past that and then the filter starts to drive. I'll just demonstrate that. I bring that up now. Starts to drive into the filter. Same with all of the waves. You get an additional harmonic and a low sort of smudge to it. The microbrew also has another little trick in the oscillator section, and it's this. If we look at the front panel here, and I bring up my sawtooth wave, nice and buzzy with plenty of weight to it. If I bring the square in, it sort of disappears almost. Bottom end, no bottom end. Now I first thought that this was uh, maybe a problem, but in fact, Arturia tell me that those waves are set to be out of phase with each other because it creates some additional interesting harmonic possibilities. If I show you, bring up the oscilloscope. Saw, and I bring the square wave in. Basically, it doubles the frequency. And then if I modulate the pulse width, I get an interesting sort of pitch wobble rather than just a straight pulse width. Now obviously if I wanted to add extra weight, I could always just bring in either the uh, sawtooth, sorry, either the triangle or the sub. But an interesting use of, sort of limited parameters there. Let's take a look at the back. We've got power switch and a 12 volt DC in with the power supply comes with. USB connection for MIDI hookup, MIDI input only. Uh, then we've got an audio input uh, with this little push-pull pot for the input gain. This is a mono quarter inch jack. Headphone output on mini jack, line output on mono quarter inch. Then we've got 
gate in, gate out, and pitch out for CV. So we could basically take a signal from either the keyboard or from an external DAW and trigger external modular equipment. Uh, and then finally, we've got this little push-pull tuning switch and a couple of little adjustment switches for uh, tweaking the analog, probably the scaling and the tracking, I'd imagine. <laughs> As with the original, we've also got the same Steiner Parker filter. Here it is. Has a nice creamy sound when we start to drive it a bit harder. Starts to buzz a bit more. Try that with a square wave. Once you bring the resonance in, if we go back to the sawtooth. It's got that strange, almost MS-20 style filter, really kind of warbly and breaks up. And we can have it so that it will play. As with the Mini Brute, it was a little bit unpredictable. <laughs> I wouldn't call it sort of a perfect filter to play with uh, pitching, but uh, there you go, at least you can do it. There's also the familiar Mini Brute factor, which is a feedback loop tied to the VCA, just like on the Mini Brute. Here we go, uh, if I take the resonance down, bring up, and then take the Brute factor up. It goes from uh, subtle to sort of bit crushed uh, and noisy mess that's almost impossible to control. Next up, we've got a single envelope. Uh, obviously, we can affect the filter uh, positively or negatively with the envelope amount. ADSR envelope, nice and simple. We can switch between envelope and gate on the VCA, so we could ha effectively have a gated VCA and then just use the envelope as a mod. Let's take a look at the envelope. I'm going to use one of these little patch cords provided to come of the CV out on the patch bay of the envelope, so control voltage out into the pitch. Now, I've got a wave here. Now, I can dial in the amount of envelope using this knob here. So let's drop that right down. Get some zap. Certainly not bad, able to do percussive and kind of zappy type sounds. Perhaps not the snappiest I've heard, but definitely fast enough for those. While we're on the subject of this little patch bay, we'll see what we can patch. These are all little mini jacks, so they'll work with your Euro rack stuff. LFO output and envelope output control voltage can go to, on the top row, the metal of the triangle wave, the modulation of the ultrasaw, uh, also the sub tone, so you can go from oscillator to fifth. Uh, we can go to send that to the pitch, the filter, uh, also the pulse width modulation. What's kind of interesting about that is, you know, it adds even more patchability so that we can integrate it with a uh, modular system or other pieces of equipment as well. Uh, perhaps more so even than the Mini Brew. We've also got a single LFO here, if I close up again. Uh, this basically is default mapped to the pitch. We can switch it. If I bring the pitch mod wheel up. Take the rate right up into the audio rate and beyond. It can be synced to the sequencer, more on that later, or run free. Perhaps the best illustration of this is if I start bringing some of these little patch cords into play. Uh, now if I come close up and I patch the LFO output into the filter input. Now if I bring the filter into play, we could just hear we've got a sawtooth wave and a square wave. Again, this goes it's got a point where it goes right up into the audio range so you can get a lot sort of buzz and grit and grind and what have you. So again, you know, nice little feature. These little patch cords, genius idea. That's the ability to be able to patch these in. It also brings up the interesting point of patching it into other equipment as well. Because not only that, we've got the CV and gate 
connections on the back and the external processing. Right, so talking about connectivity, uh, brings out the modular. Always good, like a nice excuse to get this out. This is the Monorocket case. Uh, check them out, they make some good stuff. Uh, a few modules in here, we've got some Pittsburgh stuff, we've got some uh, dope for A115 MIDI, uh, mini voice. Let's take a look at the connections. I'm starting out by coming just the CV out of the Micro Brute. I'm coming into the input of the Pittsburgh oscillator. And I'm coming out of that into a mixer channel here with an attenuator and that's coming out and coming back in to the external input of the micro brute. Seems to be triggering nicely and tracking very well. So now I'm going to bring some uh, of the other waves in. I'm going to add a little bit of glide. bring the brief factor down. Uh, and I'll bring a square wave up too. Sounds great, doesn't it? All those oscillators happening together. So I've got my sub wave and two squares, one coming from the external output. But I could do more, obviously. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm now taking the LFO out of the a115 mini synthesizer voice coming into a little attenuator that's coming into a malt I'm taking one of the splits into the pulse width modulation of the uh, Pittsburgh oscillator and the other one is coming out and I'm going to bring that and I'm going to put that into the patch bay right here so now I'm going to bring up the attenuation so I'm getting lots of pulse width modulation the glide here is only affecting the internal ones, it's not affecting the external oscillator. Sounds great, doesn't it? All that sort of movement and thickness and sort of wobble. We should also look at the sequencer functions because this does actually have a sequence. It doesn't have an arpeggiator like the Mini Brute, but the Micro Brute has a sequencer. You can see we've got eight patterns. Each of them is up to 64 steps. All I have to do is press play. I can just basically run it as you'd expect. Now there are de various different modes to it as well. Um, I have got a beta copy of the software that allows me to change the sequence of modes, but I don't think it's fair I show you because it's not finished and I think it might just misrepresent. But let's say what we can do is we can set the sequencer to be in quarter note resolution, eighth, 16 and 32. So we can effectively increase the tempo and double it up. And it's really easy to program. All you do is select the sequence you want, go into record mode and play. Press that for a rest. And I'm done. We can also set the clock to advance on a trigger or gate input. So effectively we can bring the sequence on step by step. So we could feed in any kind of trigger or in fact you can use just this button here to emulate that. So you could, you could add sort of swing and shuffle time by either pressing the button in time or adding a gate trig. So I've got my software set up in the, on the Arturia panel to allow me to take from external gate. Uh, I've got the Volker keys here running a sequence and the Volker beats. These two are synced up via their sync outs. Then I'm taking another sync into the Arturia. So now if I switch that have the whole thing running in sync and I can change the tempo of the sequencer. Now that is set up in the software control panel so you set the clock to external but if you can imagine you could take like a rim shot or something out of an 808 or some kind of something from your door to give it a swung feel and you could advance the steps based on those sort of timing. So quite a lot of flexibility there for something really relatively simple. So there's the Micro Brute from Arturia. Um, does a lot, doesn't it? It seems it's a pretty impressive piece of equipment for the money. 269 quid we're talking here. That is a steal. I don't know how on earth they managed to make it for that price. The fact that it interfaces with this, all this equipment, I can 
patch it into my modular. If I had a modular thing, I can use this as essentially the control station. I can USB it to my computer, integrate the whole lot. I could have paid that much just for a USB MIDI interface, CV with CV capability, you know, several years ago. Uh, I think they're gonna sell bucket loads of these. I only hope they can make them fast enough. It's not as complex a synthesizer engine as some of those more expensive synthesizers. It fits very nicely between the Volkers, uh, the Mini Brew and the Base Station 2, that kind of thing. But it has character and you are able to get a decent range of sounds in it. And it's fun, very tweaky. I think um, it's hard not to recommend it. And I certainly would like to hang on to this one, that's for sure. Um, but I imagine they're gonna be screaming for it for reviewers and for people to buy. So good job, Arturia. I think they're gonna be very successful. Mm -hmm.